So I think that this is the year you can put on what probably will be the most profitable spread trade of my lifetime, which is to be short these companies and that anybody that basically lives off of this two or 3% tax and be long, well thought out Web3 crypto projects that are rebuilding payments infrastructure in a completely decentralized way. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that what you say won't also happen, both that Stripe will have an incredible IPO and that a lot of these scammy crypto projects will go to zero. However, if you read the white papers of these crypto projects and you systematically put together a, a framework, I think you can be long those and you can be short Visa MasterCard because I think this is their peak market cap. Complete and utter bullshit. I am calling Shamath out for stating that Web3 cryptos are going to be the future infrastructure of payment systems, payment gateways, and you should be shorting right now Visa, MasterCard, PayPal. I mean, Stripe's coming to the market is potentially the largest IPO in history. And he's stating that all of these companies have basically reached their max market caps. And I just find it so funny to tell everyone to short one company but not list one web3 crypto in the bubbly market that is the crypto space to not even name one crypto that you are buying or bullish on just seems so absurd to me mentioning this over the holidays so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at some of these stocks and i'm very biased here because i don't own any of them by the way but we're gonna talk about the stocks and we're gonna talk about what visa mastercard have that maybe you know crypto doesn't and then we're gonna talk about what crypto has that these companies don't so this is a conversation that interests you because it's extremely extremely fascinating this new disruptive world consider hitting that like button help the channel out a little bit folks but let's first and foremost take a look at the charts themselves with uh let's talk about mastercard here guys which is by the way uh retesting all-time highs or could very potentially be retesting all-time highs this very month right after the holidays when shamath said short them they've reached their max market cap so we're already losing that bet and it hasn't even been two days into the new year on the open market right take a look at visa here guys also coming back it looks like it's rallied really nicely off those lows paypal I absolutely hate. I don't like PayPal. The fees are exuberant. And I basically cut off almost 90 plus percent of my payments coming through PayPal. So I can see why, you know, PayPal with their large fee structure and their international exchange fees, which are nuts because they're like three, four, five percent that I, I, I get why they're going down. I think they're a great company. Don't get me wrong. It, they just rub me the wrong way. So I'm not the biggest fan here, folks. But let's talk about Stripe as well. I mean, Stripe's going to be coming to the market potentially this year as the largest market market cap company to ever IPO. It is expected to be over a hundred billion dollars in valuation. Now, just extending into this really quick, guys, we're talking about conglomerates here. I mean, Visa is sitting on $18 billion in cash. We're talking about free cash flow exceeding $14 billion for 2021. This company has such a moat in the first world, Western world societies that it doesn't seem like implausible that they can't upgrade the infrastructure considerably to start adopting crypto or blockchain technology. And it's just kind of absurd to me to think that, you know, this year will be the year that I stop using Visa and MasterCard to you know, buy my gas, buy McDonald's, basically pay for all my monthly expenses, et cetera, et cetera. And we're going to expand on that more because crypto is going to be disrupting some of this. And I think it's prevalent to talk about, but one of the reasons and one of the goats or one of these kind of, you know, leading examples that he used the, that, you know, Visa and MasterCard have reached max market cap. And don't get me wrong. I think they're going to lose a lot of market share over the next decade. We're going to talk about why, but he said that because Amazon is stopping uh, accepting Visa cards in the UK, that this is the catalyst that's going to lead to a larger expansion of Amazon cutting them off because their fees are far too high. And in Europe, their fees were way too exuberant. But the funny thing was, is they didn't exactly ban them. They stopped you from using credit cards, but you can still use prepaid Visa debit cards. So if you have a Visa debit card that you use for your banking, you can still use it to buy stuff on Amazon in the UK. So it's not like it was just 100% banned. And I don't think that is going to be the goat or the, the catalyst that's going to lead to an escapade of just people dropping Visa or MasterCard. I just don't see it. It's like Stripe, right? Like when are we going to start seeing the adoption of crypto into the back end of online services? I use Stripe for a lot of my Shopify, your, your Squarespace stores. 
they're just such conglomerates at this point, guys. It's just it seems weird to me that these things are just going to go belly up in the next year, not belly up, but a, a complete reduction or pullback because of loss of market share. But we're going to talk more about that in a second. The first thing I want to talk about that that these cards have that crypto doesn't that nobody really talks about is leverage. I mean, we keep talking about how crypto can disrupt real estate and uh, real estate transactions and a lot of these things. But the problem I have with it is they don't let you leverage. There's no cryptocurrency out there today that you can just email somebody and say, hey, here's my job. Here's how much money I make this year. How much of a loan will you give me? No, you can only loan crypto if you own it with that backed asset value. Like it just, it seems weird to me that you can't just leverage, you know, a credit card like you can a crypto card. It, it, visas are leverage capital from the bank. Right now, you can get things like ShakePay cards. I personally have this. And a lot of people think that this is like the first crypto credit cards, but they're not. They are basically cash-backed debit cards. That's it. If you own a ShakePay account, you have to have Canadian dollars in there, and you can spend them and get a really good interest rate from using the ShakePay Visa card. This isn't a crypto credit card, guys. It's it's nothing of the likes. And even if you come out with a crypto credit card, it's not going to be backed by leverage because there's obviously a lot more risk and stuff that comes in that can't be operated through a decentralized network. So that's one of the falters that I find. The next one is obviously security. If you are moving around multi-million dollar transactions, say in the real estate market or just in general, most people like the comfort of knowing that when you're sending a wire transfer, yeah, it takes a few days. Yeah, you're going to pay some fees. But if it screws up, hey, guess what? I can make one phone call and that money's back in my bank account. I've had my credit card stolen three or four times over the last 10 years, guys. When I was traveling, one of my credit cards got stolen. Somebody purchased a plane ticket with it. One phone call, second later, reverse transaction back in my account. Crypto, unfortunately, isn't for the stupid. Uh, if you do not know what you're doing with crypto, even though I think it's much more secure for people that know what they're doing, you just send one transaction to the wrong number on a wallet and it's vaporized, gone for ever and that scares the shit out of the average day person so unfortunately crypto needs to find more security this is why we keep saying or why i keep saying that the future isn't the disruption of banks and these big visa mastercard companies but rather the emergence of both because if you can bring on and again we're going to see the federal reserve the canadian treasury are going to start bringing on their own crypto based dollar you know um, blockchain technologies I, that's an inevitability in my opinion as it also will probably get into closing houses the back end of how we deal with stocks i honestly think it's going to be one of the most disruptive technologies but I feel like it needs an emergence of some of these things um, that crypto just doesn't offer right now, and it can only be done through traditional platforms. So let's talk about what crypto has that these things just don't. And the first and foremost, guys, is the fact, and Shamath talks about this in that video. If you go watch it, he does go on about the fact that nearly 3 billion people or 30% of the world's population have never used the internet, according to the United States. And the vast majority of these people don't have access to traditional banks because these are largely third and second worlds. And as the internet becomes more and more available, the only thing that they're going to have access to, especially when you're talking about certain places in Africa, I mean, Venezuela is a great example here guys that those people would likely turn to the decentralized asset aspect of banking rather than use their traditional banking which is why a lot of people are highly bullish on the crypto market because basically they the crypto is going to be building up the infrastructure of the rest of the world in my opinion i think that is a high likelihood of happening and the other thing that crypto really does well guys is that idea of decentralization the fact that you can pick cryptos that aren't uh basically going to be inflated to nothing the fact that uh, crypto can't be taken from you it, it, there's a lot of other things that come with the stability i think making it its own asset class i mean kevin o'leary said it is the next asset class that people didn't think could exist um it's a very interesting and intriguing place and again i think it's going to disrupt a huge percentage of traditional finance however the problem right now guys is because it's like the early days of the internet it's a bubble I've said this time and time again, guys, there's over 8,000 cryptos that currently exist. Most of them, 90% of them, are going to go to dead zero. This is why I don't think Shamoth has the balls to actually name the cryptos he's buying because you have to diversify them. It doesn't matter how good the project is. The fact of the matter is, is people can copy and paste crypto code. There is no IP. It is very hard to have an IP on a crypto when it's supposed to be decentralized. So even if somebody comes up with a good project, there's nothing saying Visa and MasterCard can't just rip them off and you know adopt it into their own system. There's so much 
much stuff going on at play here that makes that risk reward scenario so absurdly high. It's no surprise that we're hearing kids in their basement making millions of dollars off NFTs and rando crypto projects that you've never heard of before, right? This is why I also think you're seeing people, these large kind of fund investors, the Elon Musks of the world seeing the potential here, but really only putting money where the security is at the highest percentage or the path of least resistance to wealth, as I call it, which primarily is Bitcoin and Ethereum. But I don't even think Ethereum is all that great. It's very clunky. Anybody that does coding, which I don't, I try and listen to experts in every field and every expert that deals with coding talks about how shitty Ethereum network really is, why they're trying to evolve it. The fact that they're moving to proof of stake rather than using, you know, right now the hardware mining of it with the nodes, which again, doesn't even, nobody even knows if that's actually going to truly happen or if it happens successfully. A lot of risk in this space. So I'm going to make a bold prediction right now that crypto is going to be probably the largest utility shift in, in the financial world across many spectrums. It's going to hit music. It's going to hit the transaction of baseball games, the way you buy those tickets, movies, all of that jazz. It's coming, baby. It's just not here yet. So if you're you're jumping into this space, be aware that the likelihood of you losing money is about 98% in my humble opinion. I, I mean, I'm, I own a lot of Bitcoin. I'm very bullish on Bitcoin, but I do accept the reality that if we go into a crypto winner, it's probably going to be very bad, which we've seen in those charts, all of those charts in the past, right? So just be aware of what's going on here, guys. Just just keep an open mind. Take these things that these, these billionaires take with a grain of salt because, I mean, if you go look at how Shamath made most of his money, it was through SPACs in the best year that you could make money off SPACs, which, by the way, very weird industry because those managers that set that up made like 20% commissions. And I think he brought, what, Virgin Galactic Public, a few other companies, which go look at how those investments are doing. Uh, you never hear him talk about his past investments. It's more or less just kind of these bold, blunt statements that I just think are are far stretching and polarizing just to keep himself relevant these days. I mean, he's the same guy that said, oh, you should buy Tesla stock. And then, you know, not even six months later said, oh, I sold all of my Tesla stock or whatever. And, and just, he just, you know, polarizing discussion guy. I mean, I should be more like him and just say polarizing shit just to keep conversations going and, you know, remain in the limelight. I wish he was more like an Elon Musk, very methodical about his statements rather than just sitting on a podcast rambling, but that's what he likes to do. That's what I like to do. So I, I can't say I'm any better, but just a fun, you know, combative conversation today. So stay cool, stay awesome. And I look forward to catching you tomorrow.